have um, six volunteers. Please, don't be shy. Please come out. Six. <laughs> One more person. Okay, we're six. Can I invite you to this table? <laughs> okay, there are different things here. Uh, so, make your choice. Uh, Look at the bag. Just make your choice. You can have more than one item. Okay. <laughs> okay, please, can I have the microphone? Okay. So why did you pick what you picked? Okay, first of all, I'm allergic to eating apple and the banana is not that good looking. Okay. Then also, I think the sausage roll is calling my name. Okay, thank you. <laughs> this passes to the next person. Why did you make your choice? Instinct. Okay. And then I, I love the color orange. Okay. Yeah. This passes to her. Okay, because I love fruits, I love apples and carrots. Okay. Oh, well, I love sugar. <laughs> and I don't like fruits. <laughs> okay. I love um, apple very well and carrots. Okay. I like apple. I like uh, meat pie too. Okay. So I love eating apple before meat pie. Oh, okay. Now, for the two people that picked um, apple and carrots, why do you love fruits? Okay, I actually understand the health benefit of fruits because I'm a nurse. Oh, okay. Because you're a nurse. Yes. This passes to her. Okay. Um, I know preferably, I prefer fruits to um, juices or any other forms of what I call a supplement that can still give me this because I know these are natural. Okay. Thank you. You can go back to your seats. Please clap for them. Yes, with them. Yes, please take them with you. <laughs> okay, um, two days ago, I was reviewing a patient with an endocrinologist. An endocrinologist is a specialist that reviews people that have issues with the glands in the body that produce hormones that control your glucose, um, your reproductive hormones. So that's who an endocrinologist with is. And two days ago, I was reviewing a patient with her, and she told me that in one of the biggest hospitals in this city, that on a daily basis, their emergency ward is filled with patients that have hypertension and diabetes, and that hypertension is the new malaria, in our words, and that we have an epidemic on our hands. It is alarming. This morning, I'm going to be talking to you about prevention rather than cure the evolution of lifestyle medicine. I don't know how many people have heard about lifestyle medicine, but lifestyle medicine is that arm of medicine that focuses on recognizing and treating the causes of diseases rather than the symptoms. Now, what usually happens when you come to the hospital is that you present with maybe headache, um, fever, and then the doctor asks you, oh, what's wrong with you? Okay, go and run a test. Maybe you have malaria and they give you the drugs for malaria. But there's something that is causing the malaria that you have. If that thing is not removed, you will come back one month after with malaria again. Now, what are the things in our environment that we know that causes malaria? Stagnant water, um, so mosquitoes breed, non-use of insecticide in the house, non-use of mosquito nets. If those things are not um, focused upon, that individual is going to come back again because there's still stagnant water beside the house. It's going to come back again for malaria and you continue to use the medications for malaria and you will think that there's a problem with you, but no, it is the way the medicine is practiced. So now, that's what my lifestyle medicine is all about. Now this epidemic that we have, hypertension, diabetes, it's because of the lifestyle changes that have crept into our society. Now, with the emergence of um, 
social media, with the emergence of good lucrative jobs and people um, having so much money and affluence, many people want to live the big man life. So we have the big man syndrome and the big man disease. Now when you have money, most times, maybe um, you had a raise at work, somebody gave you money, sometimes you just say, I don't want to, um, I want to enjoy myself. So you go out, you go to an eatery, and then you buy the um, fatty foods, you buy the drinks. If you notice, some people took sausage and they took drink. Even somebody took carrot and still took a soda with it. You know, you want to enjoy ourselves. So the big man syndrome has crept upon us and we indulge in things that are harmful to our health. Alcohol, excessive consumption of sugar in the form of fizzy drinks, ice cream, and then fast foods industrially processed foods because we're on the go. So you look at it, I don't have time to cook my food. I don't have time to go to the market. Let me just walk into this eatery and buy the food that they have. But most times you don't know what they have used to make the food. And most times because those people are profit oriented. They're not thinking about your health. They're thinking about their pockets and they look for the um, least expensive items to produce, to give them the highest profit. So they put in anything and whatsoever. Some weeks ago, um, there was this um, buzz on social media about tenderizing meat with Panadol. I'm sure many of us did not hear about it until somebody came out and spoke about it. But eating such meat, you will have excess paracetamol in your system. Even though paracetamol is a drug that many people use commonly, but it has a side effect. It causes liver toxicity. So if you go to an eatery and you eat such meat, you are putting yourself at more risk. You are putting your health at more risk. So these things happen because of the big man syndrome in our society. And then the sedentary lifestyle. We walk in offices. We get to work in the morning. You sit at your desk and then you call the office, um, excuse me, messenger and run and send those people on errands. So you don't stand up from morning till evening when you get to work. At the end of the day, you tell yourself you're tired because you've been pressing the system from morning till when you close. But you actually didn't exercise your body. You actually didn't do anything to profit your body that day other than sitting behind the system. And then you leave work, you get back home, I'm tired, you sit behind the screen and you watch movie, you eat and then you go to bed. The next day, the same cycle happens again. And these are lifestyle practices that poses, that um, endangers us, that increases the chances of these lifestyle-related diseases. Hypertension, diabetes, obesity, hyperlipidemia, that increase cholesterol in the body. Now, according to the World Health Organization, these are the top 10 diseases that lead to mortality worldwide. Before, Nigeria didn't have any of this except diarrheal diseases and tuberculosis. Our major problem in Nigeria before was communicable and infectious diseases. So malaria, HIV, hepatitis, polio, diarrheal diseases in children, those were the um, health issues that faced us in Nigeria. But now, with those diseases still there, because our governments have not been able to do so much to eradicate these infectious diseases. Now we have the non-communicable diseases that have crept in upon us. And if you look at this slide, the only disease here that you can do nothing about, that you cannot prevent technically, is Alzheimer's. Because Alzheimer's has to do with aging. But every other disease that is on this list can actually be prevented by the lifestyle practices that we engage in. Now, this slide shows um, the indices in Australia. The life expectancy in Nigeria presently is 55.4 years. What that means is that you are, ex you are not expected to live more than 55 years as a Nigerian. If you are 60, then you're a fantastic person. God has blessed you with good health. That's what it means. Meanwhile, in Australia, the life expectancy is 82.5 years. Now, Australia is one of the countries, is number seven on the list of top 10 best countries to live in the world. Looking at those charts, Australia has diverted so much money, allocated so much of the public funds to the health sector, including preventive medicine, which lifestyle medicine falls under. They have also allocated a large percentage to research 
into health. So they can find out what the changes, the current changes in health are, and they can take action for it immediately. Now, parts of lifestyle medicine that you can focus on, your, your diet, your level of activity. Now, the food that we eat, it is not so much of the quantity, but the quality of what you eat. You're supposed to have at least five portions of fruits and vegetables on a daily basis. Now, the environment, what kind of houses do we live in? Most times, because of the same big man syndrome, we live in houses that we shut the windows because we're enjoying the air conditioner. And then we leave, it's only when we come outside, maybe to enter our cars that have ACs also, that we take in fresh breeze. Now, that is not good for our respiratory system. Also, rest. How many hours do you sleep for in a day? You should sleep for at least six to eight hours in a day. So if you're not resting well, you're also overstretching your health and putting yourself at danger of having the chronic diseases. Now, what is the future? In developed countries, successive governments continue to reduce expenditure on the health system, transferring this cost to private individuals and organizations. So the government is taking care of the big problems and they are telling the individuals, take care of your health while they will prevent the diseases that can come up. Now, where do you come in? You can make healthy choices on a daily basis. You can decide to leave the sausage and have an apple. You can decide to leave the soda and have the water that nobody took today. <laughs> you can decide to nurture your health. You can decide to sleep even in the midst of chaos, whether you worry or you don't worry. Whatever it is that you're worrying about will still be there whether you sleep or you don't sleep. So why don't you sleep? Because you know that that sleep is good for your health. If the health of Nigeria, of Africa, is going to be better, it's dependent on the choices that you make. I will employ you today that you make the right and healthy choices for our health. Thank you very much. <laughs>